steps, you know, and, and it's cradled in this mountain here, almost like a, a grail. And in some ways, uh, you know, the poet tries to hold that same kind of uh, cup where everything meets. Uh, I'm so, sorry, that's just yeah. That's just too uh, obtrusive. So we'll too start. obtrusive. Yeah, let's start again. Okay, right. let's start that again. We won't have that kind of bad luck too often, I hope. You mentioned this concept, the ecological imagination. Yes. So obviously this is sort of the distillate for you of yes. some of your thinking. Yes. So say something about it. What is it exactly? Well, it's an imagination where the image itself has uh, many different realities constellated within it. It isn't an image that you're trying to impose on the world. It's an image that's received after you've remained quiet and you're willing to pay attention to the uh, miracle of creation as it is. Now that miracle may take the form of despair and alienation as it has over the last 60 years, but you pay attention to it. You know, we live in a monocultural society um, where you, you plant wheat in one field and you spray down on either side so you get one crop and, uh, and the soil, which comes from the same root as the word soul, suffers as a result. You know, in the eastern Palouz of Washington State, they've lost 25 to 50 feet of topsoil you know, through intensive mining, almost mining ag agriculture. You know, here we are in the botanic gardens in Prague, um, where plants have been brought from all over the world. It's a, in some ways, it's a, it's a wish by humanity to recreate the beauty and imagination of the rainforest, or, or of an ecology that where, where things fit together exquisitely. Mm -hmm. And we have this uh, inside us. We have this... Uh, this patterning, this understanding that, uh, that the world fits together absolutely exquisitely and we have a possibility of fitting together too. So the poet remains silent, looks out at the world, receives all the images that comes in and tries to say the one word that represents the whole ecology of, of everything that is received and hopefully will give birth to that world in, in the word, in the line. This you know. suggests somehow that uh the word is made flesh, or in your yes. metaphor, the flesh is made word. Yes, yes, or, or the word is made ecology. The, the word, word is, is made ecology. Yeah. Well, so this is an aesthetic of nature, almost Emersonian in its scope. Uh, this is a far cry from futurism or the glorification of the technological that a lot of 20th century poetics has been about. Yes. Do you see yourself as a part of a conservative impulse in poetry or a reforming impulse? How does that work? No, I don't see it as being conservative. It may be looked at that way from from the uh, um, from the areas of art which, say, uh, um, Andy Warhol inhabited, where the whole emphasis was on the latest wave that was breaking on the shore. Fashion. Uh, yes, fashion, and the whole sea that was behind each wave as it came upon the shore was ignored. And so I think what there is now is a, a resting back, a swimming out, a diving down into that sea um, to re-establish our eldership. I think much of what's happening in the 20th century is a re-establishment of eldership. I mean, here we are in Prague. Prague has been almost has been asleep, almost like uh, Rip Van Winkle for the last what 40 years. Yes. Anyway, 40 years, yes. possibly longer. And it's awaking again. It's awaking, and there's so much awaking in the world today um, and I think poetry has always been the art where you remind people of what life is about and what is essential to it and what's as, uh, as Pericles said what is uh, what is sweet and what is terrible about life that you have to know both those things and the poet ignores neither so hopefully it's not the kind of conservatism where you're trying to go back to some Edenic uh, Rousseauistic past where everyone can gather under one oak tree and discuss the problems of the village. That's never going to, never going to happen. Um, 
But the poet neither, uh, he does not hide, or she does not hide the beauty of life, uh, and does not hide the alienation. You know, this century we've had tremendous emphasis on looking into the cracked mirror of alienation and saying, look at where we are. I mean, Eliot's uh, um, The Wasteland was all about that. But there's another side to it too. You can only do that for so long, otherwise you know you have no more impetus to go on. That there has to be, here, let's go up here. Yeah. There has to be some kind of healing. There can only be so much of this existential angst and uh, mm -hmm. well... Well, you see, Sartre, he, he came up to a tree, you said, and he put his finger on the tree and he says, he said, life is absurd because I cannot understand that tree, I cannot become, I cannot get my soul into that tree. Um, well, the Zen patriarchs have been talking about this for, for 1500 years and you weren't supposed to get your consciousness into the tree. <laughs> you were supposed to pay such tremendous attention to the tree that it came to find you. Yes, Sartre yeah. said nature is mute, which yeah. is to me one of the most amazing statements any 20th century philosopher has made in terms of defining alienation, I think that would have to be it. Well, I don't think the French have been very successful with their philosophers over the last <laughs> 350 well, years. They, 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 they are uh, yeah. they're welded to materialism. Yeah. Uh, well, so at this conference there's been a lot of talk yeah. about hope. Where, mm -hmm. it, where do the poets come down? Are you singing a funeral dirge for a world passing away, or is this the bright birth of the new young prince? Well, hopefully, um, I mean, hopefully neither in some ways, because uh, you, you simply have to speak life as it is. So at this time we're speaking tremendous change, we're speaking the stakes are very high. You can fail in life, an individual human being can fail in life. Um, a species can fail in life. I mean, in some ways, we always live out our destiny, um, no matter what we do. It just depends what level you want to live out that destiny. Do you want to live out your destiny on the level of frustration? Because you can do that. Or do you want to step further and deeper into it? So poetry says, always says the stakes are very high. And it relies on, on the fact that life itself is magnificent. You speak about the magnificence of, magnificence of life not in a Pollyannish sense, or in a sense in which you're going to ignore all the difficulties and terrible beauties of life, but in the sense that it's, it's magnificent because you can fail at it, and we as a species can fail. So the hope of the poet is that you can, uh, you can speak to the magnificence of life such that people will be reminded uh, that life is magnificent and you can fail, it, fail at it, and the stakes are very, very high, the stakes of your life. So that's almost a bardic uh, manifesto. Well, do you feel moved to speak some poetry? We'll move from talking about poetry to speaking poetry? Yes. Well, we spoke about the tree earlier and, and having, the, having the world come and find you. And, and uh, I'm reminded of a very simple poem. This is a very powerful poem for me. It's a, it's a, uh, a teaching story, actually, out of the Northwest Indian tradition where uh, um, the story is there to tell a young boy or girl um, what to do when they're lost in the forest, or, it's, or to answer the question. You know, when the young boy or girl asks the question, what do I do when I'm lost in the forest, the elder tells his story. It's been rendered into marvelous modern English by uh, David Wagoner, who has the chair of poetry at the University of Washington in, in uh, the Northwest United States. And uh, it's a very simple poem called Lost. And here it's... Uh, it's he says, take the burden off your shoulders, basically, this story. And he says, uh, the young boy or girl says to the, to the elder, what do I do when I'm lost in the forest? And the elder says, stand still. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. Stand still. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are, it's called here. And you must treat it as a powerful stranger, must ask permission to know it and be known. Listen. Listen. The forest breathes, it whispers, I have made this place around you. If you leave it, you may come back again saying, here, saying here. If you leave it, you may come back again saying, here. No two trees are the same to raven. No two branches are the same to wren. If what a tree or a branch does is lost on you, then you are surely lost. If what a tree or a branch does is lost on you, then you are surely lost. Stand still, the forest 
knows where you are, you must let it find you. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you to David Wagoner and the Salish elders from the Northwest. Well, you, yes. you give it life. But you know, the Zen patriarchs used to say that uh, if, you, uh, if you go out and confirm the 10,000 things, this is delusion. If the 10,000 things come and confirm you, this is enlightenment. Now, I wish one had been around to mention this to Sart, you know, in the 1930s. <laughs> they might have understood that the Germans were at their border. <laughs> and they could have <laughs> well, we could have yeah. avoided a painful moment in yes. history, for sure. Well, thank you for coming you. and talking to us. We've been talking with David White, poet, shaman, philosopher. Thanks very much. Thank you. David. Wonderful to be here in Prague with you. Well, it's uh, nice to have a chance to talk to you yes. again. You did that very well. there just for a sec where you were with David? Just they want us back right here. Uh, don't talk and just give me 10 seconds or 20 seconds. Of okay, standing. don't talk. It's Ambiance. An, it's an easy assignment. Did you see the... Uh, have you had a chance to appreciate all this Jugendstile architecture? Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's astonishing. Yeah. 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 I, need, I need the sound just of the water. Okay, you're free to talk. Okay. Are we free oh, to move? Yeah. Are you done with us? <laughs> Can talent move? Uh, hold it. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and move. Okay, good. That's it. Well, that was... We make it look easy. Yes, we'll have to do some more. <laughs> Yeah, hear it. Oh no, you can't hear it. It's all through yeah, the marvel of the bug.